Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Zurius and today we're going to be looking at advanced texturing techniques. And I thought we would start off in game. So here we are in game. I've turned my shaders off so we can see this totally vanilla. So here's the cyber pick using the default 16 by 16 textures that we covered in the first video. And here it is in hand and third person. So let's go back into Blockbench and we'll go over some more advanced ways of applying textures to this model. Right, back in Blockbench now, we're looking at the cyber pick here. If you haven't already seen part one, there's a quick pop out in the top right there for you if you want to go and watch it just now. You'll see how we got to this point. You don't have to have seen that episode to learn a bit more about texturing, so don't worry about it if you haven't seen it yet. You can always go back and watch it another time. So we've got the UV area up here, which is indicated by this, and this shows you which face of the current cube I have selected. In this case it's the south face and this box here shows you the texture that is currently mapped to this face. Now in the first episode I advised that you should use auto UV which is what I've done here. So what auto UV will do is it will read the size of this cube and then map the texture size to the same size as this. So if I just make this a bit bigger and you'll see nothing's really changed here because it's all the same color so it's not really noticeable but if I click auto UV it shrinks back down to the exact same size as this. So it's very useful when working at a default resolution for Minecraft. So let's say I want to put some more detail in here. So this is a tiny, tiny little cube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top right here and click Paint. Now this is Blockbench's built-in paint program. It's very, it's very basic, but it is very, very useful. A lot of the time, if you're doing low poly models, you probably won't need to take your textures outside of Blockbench, but we're going to do a bit of everything today on this video. So let's see how we can get on with this. So I've just selected white and up here at the top, you can see I'm using the paintbrush and I can just keep it as a round paintbrush. The size is 100 opacity, yep. So default settings, absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna click on this here. So that's one pixel. One pixel has been filled in of the texture. Now keep in mind, this is a very small texture. You can see here it's 16 by 16 pixels. So 16 along, 16 down. So what you probably noticed there is some other parts of this have been filled in. If I just zoom out, you can see. That's because I'm editing the source texture of these blocks. They're all sharing this one texture. So if I change this, it updates on every single block that that texture has been applied to. Now this is fine if you're going for a very simple texture like this, where it's just pure flat colors. But the second you want to part start putting some more detail in here, it's time to expand. So say you want to keep the current resolution of your textures, but you want to try and add some more detail to it. The best method that I've found for doing this is this. I'm going to hit Control A to select everything. I'm then going to come down to the texture section here and click Create Texture. I'm going to click Create Template or just Template, Confirm. And I want to compress the template, sure, power of two, yep, background color, that's fine. Resolution, you can see all the options here. I'm going to keep it on the default Minecraft resolution. I'm going to hit Confirm. And you'll see that it's created a brand new texture down here. So what Blockbench has just done is it has taken our model and its current textures and unwrapped it. So this is all the blocks, all the faces. And if I just grab our paint tool over here and click here, you'll see that it's just filled in this one face. And if I just quickly undo this, we're going to look over here where my mouse cursor is. You can see if I click this, it fills in that face. I just give it a good old mess up here. You can see it's filling in all the little individual parts I've just painted over. So I'm going to use the eyedropper here, make sure I've got the correct color of red. Here we are here. Now, what I want to do is I want to keep this red color on, say, the very tip down here, but I want to start making it darker. So I'm just going to click this. And in this instance, I want to use the paint bucket tool. You've probably already noticed, but there's a bit of an issue here with the textures. We've got lots of transparent faces. So if I just click on this, you'll see that it, it does fill it in. So you don't have to worry about that. The information is still there. It's just that in the conversion, it just didn't really like a couple of things. Maybe the texture selection had gone off of the 16 by 16 palette. And then when it tried to remap, it just couldn't find anything, but it's still absolutely fine. I can just click these and fill them in and you'll see that we're not, we haven't lost any of the model data. So I'm just going to undo these for now. So I've undid it so that we're just back to the default pickaxe. Now what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to do the exact same thing again. Create texture. We want a template. And what I'm not going to do this time is I'm not going to click compress template and we'll see what happens. So you'll see now that rather than all being squished to try and keep the texture file as small as possible, it now has them all out in sort of nice neat rows, which may be easier to work with. We've still got the invisible faces. That's fine. We'll deal with that as we go. So let me just select my base red here again, make sure I've got that. 
and then I'm going to just go down a couple of bits here. I'm just going to change this to the cube option so that will fill in the entire cube and all faces on it and then I'm going to click, let's see, let's click on this one here. So we'll get that one and then this one. You'll see that it's filling this in here with a darker shade. It's kind of difficult to see here on the texture side but let me just expand this so you can see it change. So that's a tiny bit darker, let's go down another shade or two and then I'm going to just click the next one. Same again, let's just take it down a little bit this time and then we'll do a little bit more and then finally bring it down a little bit more again. So you're starting to see here we've got a bit more detail in our colour. It goes from a very bright red at the tip and slowly starts to lose colour and saturation as it gets closer to the middle here. Now as a reminder we started with this single red concrete texture here on every single one of these blocks. We now have a different shade of red on every one of them here and all we did was unwrap this and click the paint bucket tool and then filled in with some slightly darker colours. So if you're working along using my model here I would like for you to do the exact same thing I'm doing here. Just take the paint bucket up here, just grab some different shades and then what I want you to do is go for the whole model, put some nice shades on it, just put some nice colours and change it up a bit so it's not so flat looking or just totally change it, go off the rails, do whatever you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up this, put some nice detail around it and then I'll be back once we've got something that's a bit more detailed. Okay and here we have my upgraded cyber pick. So I've gone for a more blue tone overall with, with taking out the greys here and filling them in with a sort of dark blue, dark aqua. Oops I didn't mean to do that. I've also made the red more consistent across both sides and generally darkened the whites and given more of a a dark grey to a white. It's very subtle but there is a gradient there. I've also changed the handle a little bit and made the button bright yellow so that it stands out a lot more from the contrasting colours. So what I'm going to do now is I'll get the Cyberpick 2 in game with Cyberpick 1 and we'll compare them and see how they look. So here we are back on the Omnicraft server. There's the original Cyberpick 1. Let me just cheat myself in another one. Okay and here, oh okay. Okay yeah so this is a very very common thing. So what I've done here is I have forgot to change the texture file inside the model format. So let's show you how to fix that right now. So here we have our Cyberpick 1 and you'll see I've got all the textures mapped here. Now these ones are all built in textures for Minecraft so it reads these very easily so there's usually not much need to change this if you're using default textures. But we created our own texture and have since edited it. So Cyberpick 2 looks like this. So it's looking for a single texture file and block texture, which does not exist. So if we go back into Blockbench here, we'll see texture here. This is what we've been using. And this little save icon indicates that it has not been saved. Obviously, this is a very essential part of the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into our pickaxe folder. This is where the Cyberpick JSON files are. And I'm just going to call this Cyberpick2. So if we go back in here, we can see we've got Cyberpick2. There's our texture file. And what we want to do is change this. So all I'm going to do is just change this to cyberpick2 and hit control S to save. And what I'm going to do is to reload all my texture packs and resource packs, I'm going to just hit F3T. Oh wait, it didn't work. It's still not working. Why is it not working? Well, that's because we have to change the JSON file to reference inside the same folder. You would think that it would recognize that it's in the same folder but what we have to do is do a full stop and then a slash that tells it to look within the same folder as the file and if we just reload again you'll see that it's now working. Now let's have a quick look of these two from a distance here. I'm just going to zoom in. So already with the Cyberpick 2 you can see how much more detail that seems to add and all we've done is change the shading slightly. So here we have Cyberpick 1 and there's 2. It's definitely got a bit more character in it now hasn't it? Let's have a zoom in here. So Cyberpick 2 with the nice yellow button that stands out really well, lots of different shades. Cyberpick 1. So the only thing we've changed in this model is that we've added some different shades of the base colours and changed the colouring a little bit. And already there's a drastic improvement. So what's next? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the scaling of these textures, the resolution of these textures, and then I'm going to show you how to put a ridiculous amount of detail into this model that is way way above what default Minecraft has. So here we are again back in Blockbench and what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the textures here and how we can make them even more detailed. So before I continue though what I should say is that Minecraft by default as I'm sure everyone knows is a very low resolution game to 
be honest, if you go any higher than this, it's going to start to look a bit weird in-game. But if you're working on a pack or a texture set or anything like that that is natively higher resolution, this is when this sort of stuff starts to become what you're looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on this block here. You'll see that we've got this texture here, which is our UV wrap texture for the whole thing. Our little selection here is what we've got. I can just drag this out and it starts to select all of these parts here. So you'll see we've got this very weird block all of a sudden where we've got the entire texture of this model squished in here. Now the reason it's doing this is because we have set this whole thing here which is our 64 by 64 texture. So this is it here, the 64 by 64 texture. We are telling it to put this whole texture into this 16 by 16 space. And it's doing the best that it can by squishing it in there. It is all there, it's just very squished and it looks kind of, well, it doesn't look very good, does it? And what it can do is if I just grab the paint tool here and start painting on this, you can see that we are looking at a higher resolution here as opposed to this if I click on it. So what's happened here is I've clicked on this and the whole thing has turned blue because if we look at the texture, let's just increase this a little bit, click this here, you'll see this texture here has gone blue. This single pixel here represents this one face here, but because we have forced this face here to take in the entire texture file, it's now showing all these additional blocks which you'll see if I write over them, it's now colouring in those parts. But what use is this to anyone? Well, here's where things get fun. So how about we take this face here and we double the resolution of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come out of the paint tool, click on this face here. You'll see that it's highlighted this full box here. You can see I can move it up and down. And what I'm going to do is this right here, where it shows you the texture resolution, I'm going to change it to 32 by 32. So it's not very clear to see what's actually happening here when we change this. It, doesn't really change does it, it kind of looks the same. But let me just put it to 16 by 16 and they'll just grab this and we'll see it snaps to these very large pixels. If I change it to 32, doesn't look that different but it has increased. So what happens if I change it to the largest one? There's almost no snapping, it feels entirely smooth. But in fact there is, of course there is snapping here. You can see that the dimensions here are changing on much much smaller scales as I move this. So rather than going 15 to 14 to 16, it's going to 15.188 to 15.438. So we're now looking at a very high resolution selection here. So let's just bring this all the way down so that we're not looking at any of the existing textures. I'm just going to grab this color here and I'm just going to fill this face in. Wow, okay, so look how much of the space of this texture file has now been taken up. Previously, this face here was taking up one of these pixels here. Now it's taking up this space. So what I can do is I can just grab, say, a nice white colour here and I can just start to draw on this. I'm sure anyone can see that we now have gone up to a much larger scale of detail that's possible within this model. Previously one pixel filled up this entire block, now there's hundreds and hundreds of them on here. So if I just zoom out a bit you can see we've got these nice lines here. Even the smallest of changes has added so much detail to this. But if I click on these ones again, it's all just a single pixel. So it's only this single face that we have changed. So how do we make this entire thing a high resolution model? So copying the same method as before, I'm going to select the entire model. I'm going to just shrink this a bit so I can see my toolbars. So you see we've got our original texture here, which is 64 by 64. Although we do have a lot of space here at the sides, we can go much higher than this. So let's do what we did before, create texture. Resolution is going to be 256. And we're going to make sure we click template again and hit confirm. Resolution here, let's make sure we change this. We can even go up to 512 here, but let's just keep it at 256 for now. And we want to compress the template. No, let's not compress the template actually. Let's just hit confirm and see what happens. Nothing happened. That's weird. It's just given us the exact same texture. Or has it? If I start drawing on this, you will immediately see that it has taken the original textures and it has upscaled them. And we now have the original textures are much higher resolution. I just bring this over here a bit. It's quite hard to see at this point, isn't it? Because you can see we've got these tiny little lines here. But if I just zoom in a couple of times, there you are, there's those lines. What was previously one pixel for one cube is now hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pixels. Now I'm not going to say to you, now go do a very, very detailed pickaxe and make it look as amazing as you can because at this point we're really beyond what looks good in default Minecraft. But it's good to see how these things work and how the texture scaling works. 
There's absolutely nothing stopping anyone from putting a high resolution texture into Minecraft. It will just look a bit strange if it's very high resolution compared to everything else inside the world. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. So let's just take away all of this. And then what I'm going to do is we've got our new texture down here. I'm going to save it. So let's just call this CyberPick3 and I'm going to right click and edit. Now for me, this is going to open in Photoshop, but you may have a different editing tool. You can set that in the settings folder of Blockbench. What is your default? art tool. So here we have our texture inside Photoshop. So I'm going to just have a little bit of fun with this and we'll see how this looks with some ridiculous detail on it. So what I've got here is a texture, just a metal texture. All I did was Google metal texture. I'm just going to grab this. I have my texture selected and then I'm going to just edit and paste into. So it totally overlays our texture file. Now we want to see a little bit of that color coming through. So let's play around with these options a little bit. There we go. A good old overlay. So we've got all of our original colors, but now we have this really scratchy metallic texture shining through it as well. So let's just save this and make sure we save it back as the PNG file. And if I save over the original file, now what will happen is I'll jump back into Blockbench and the texture will have updated. <laughs> oh wow, okay. Now it's looking a bit weird. So here we have Cyberpick 3. Much, much higher resolution texture. I definitely don't think I would use this in game, but let's see how it looks anyway. So we're back in Minecraft again, so let's put these guys down on the ground. There's Cyberpick 1, Cyberpick 2, and let's have a look at Cyberpick 3. Uh oh, we broke the texture again. There we go, just make sure it references the right folder. And then refresh again. Wow, that is a strange, strange beast of an axe. Let's throw it down next to his brothers here. So yeah, it's definitely more detailed, but you have to ask yourself, is that really what you want in Minecraft? Again, I, I just slapped on some texture file in Photoshop. I did not put much effort into that. So given the proper time and dedication, you can make it look brilliant. But for me, matching the source material that I'm working with, matching the source scale of the textures, that's more important to me than something that's just very high resolution. So Cyber Pickaxe 1 here, it definitely fits with the resolution of Minecraft. It looks all right. It's something a bit more unique. Cyberpick 2, this is a bit, this is kind of like the sort of darker, edgier brother by the looks of things, isn't it? It's a bit more detailed with the shades. You can definitely put more work into this and make it look a bit better. And we've got Cyberpick 3 here, which is just, it kind of looks like a weird HD remaster of one of the originals, doesn't it? Where they've just upscaled the textures and stuck some filters on it. So let's jump back into Blockbench. So what's most important about this video is not that we made a great looking pickaxe because this thing just looks like it needs to be thrown out though. It's the, the methods and the technologies and the tools of what we're using here that you need to learn. And I hope that by watching this video, you feel a bit more equipped to go ahead and Blockbench and make some more detailed textures and models. I don't know why I'm just randomly doodling on this as I speak, but <laughs> there you are. But yeah, it kind of goes to show you from a high resolution version of this pickaxe to this original one, where if I do one pixel of paint onto this, it's a huge chunk of the model. But anyway, everyone, I really, really hope you found this tutorial useful. In order for me to make this better as I go forward and make more videos, your feedback is really essential. So if there's something in this video that didn't make sense, something that you feel could probably be expanded upon, or just that you have a request for some more tutorials or something else that I haven't covered yet, please let me know in the comments because that is really the best way to let me know these things. You can also join my Discord. You can find the link in the description and you can get me on Twitter. Now, if anyone has made any new models using the videos that I've made or these techniques, or maybe you've learned something new that you couldn't do before thanks to this, please let me know. Please share pictures with me and just get in touch because I would, I would love to hear how people are getting on. I would love to hear if these videos are useful for you. And I really hope that going forward, I can make lots more of these videos because I have a ton of fun doing this and I really hope you guys enjoy it. So we'll leave it there, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like, subscribe and all that fun stuff. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.